Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. It has been a freaking while. We've not been around in the YouTube universe as we've been focusing on many, many other things. But as today is the start of Advent, I thought it'd be nice to share our Advent process with YouTube peoples as well. So we're going to be looking at a little simple tip that you can implement on pretty much every single image you've ever taken to make it just that little bit more engaging for a viewer to look at. For reference, Advent is running for our members inside the MTOG vault and they will have all of Advent with a video every single day running through. Here on YouTube, we're only going to be showing a few of those videos and they're the shorter ones that we're preparing. So I'm hoping that you're still going to get some good, juicy, useful stuff, but of course, as as always the members get more so without further ado I want to take you into a picture that I've just prepared for the purposes of this demonstration and we're going to cover Lightroom Classic and Photoshop so it's well worth knowing how to do this in both you can pick and choose which one you want to look at so we'll start in Lightroom first there's a super fast way of bringing everything together a little bit more and highlighting our subject so the viewer goes straight there that's the point of this so in Lightroom what we're going to be looking at is just utilizing the mask feature so we'll go over here up into the little masking icon and then we're going to probably go ahead and start, I do usually anyway, with our background selection. So what we're literally doing is we're splitting the background from our subject using these masking features. And then we can go ahead and just bring down the highlights on the background. We could always, if we needed to, bring down the exposure, but be careful, don't go too far on it. And then when you're happy with that, and we're going to just leave these masks for now instead of neatening them up. We're going to go and grab a new one, and this is the subject. Oh, and again, we need to make sure that this is uh, an okay mask. So you can see that there's areas that need refinement here. But with this one, what we're going to do is the opposite. So we can either, if your subject's coloring makes sense with that, lift your highlights. You could lift your shadows up a little bit. You could even lift the overall exposure of them so that they're standing out a little bit more. And a way to make this kind of adjustment feel more believable, which is the point, we need to make sure it's believable, is we can go ahead and do an add of a brush. And when we add with the brush, we're going to be using a high flow. We're going to be using a fairly high feather. And then at this stage, what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and bring this adjustment through the mid-ground. So the mid-ground of an image is the sharp bit, all right? So we're going to bring that through the mid-ground. You can bring it through the foreground if you want to as well. And then it makes that adjustment feel more believable because we're grounded. So we're grounded in this pot of light that we've conveniently placed our subjects within. That is split toning, as I like to call it, in Lightroom. So like I said, the masks aren't perfect, but hopefully it illustrates the point of making the attention fall mostly on our subject rather than being pulled away too much by the background. So how do we do that adjustment in Photoshop? So there's a few different ways and let's go there now. You can go ahead and duplicate the background layer using a command J because it just simplifies things. And then how do you do this in Photoshop? Well, as always, there's 3000 different ways to actually achieve that result. The easiest one is to use the camera raw filter and implement masks in exactly the same way we just did in Lightroom. So we'll start there first. So that's filter camera raw filter. And then inside the camera raw filter, when that opens up for you, you can go into masking on the right hand side. You can go ahead and grab your background and the process remains exactly the same. So you just would add new mask for your subject and split those two out there separately. The other way of doing it is a little bit more finessed and that one actually uses curves to do two separate things. So you would need at first a subject mask. So we'll just go ahead and do a select subject and see how good that selection is for us. Okay, so that selection is, is actually considerably better than Lightroom's selection was for us, apart from the fact that my hand is not included. So what we can do to just add that in is to go ahead and grab an object selection tool, which lives in this set here. And we can go ahead and grab that. If we hold down shift, then it will add my hand to the selection. All right. so. Do you see how it's now selected? It's pretty difficult to see sometimes, but um, hopefully that is helpful. So we've got that selection made. We can then go ahead and add a adjustment layer. So coming down here, you've got this little circle with a line through it. We add an adjustment layer and it is a curves. So with this curves layer, 
This is currently working because we're, we're white. The subject is white on here and the background is black. This is our subject adjustment. So we can go ahead and give that a little bit of a lift with the curve so we can lift overall exposure. We can even, if we want to, add a little bit of contrast coming through there and just tweak our levels. So you don't want to go too crazy. It's totally up to you. Um, but a little bit of a lift is usually helpful. All right, so we'll give that a little bit of a lift. We'll bring that back down a bit. So that is our subjects lifted. So you would need to at this stage, if you want to, and you probably will need to, go and touch up that mask. But this one, remember, we also needed the foreground out. Now, if you do it in this order and you do your subject first in Photoshop, what you actually want to do is grab a new adjustment layer of a curves first and then duplicate your mask by holding down option, click, drag, drop that mask up onto that top curves layer. Go ahead and say, yeah, we do wanna replace it and then we're gonna invert it. So it's working on the opposite. So instead of working on the subject, it's gonna work on the background. So that's a command I. And from this, our background curves adjustment, we can do a more of a highlight control. We've talked about curves previously on the channel and that is something that you can go ahead and have a look at. I'll link a video to that above. But then we'll go back to our subject mask by clicking on it down here, grabbing a brush. We're gonna do a big keyboard shortcuts also covered in a different video. I'll link that above. And we'll go ahead and do a big soft brush here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make it white on the paintbrush, 100% opacity, 100% flow. And we're gonna to start to just bring in that little bit of a mid-ground strip that we talked about earlier on. So that helps to make it a little bit more believable. And you wanna go in and check that you don't have any hard edges hitting anything that we don't wanna hit. So as always with Photoshop and with masking, especially at the moment, you need to go in and do some touching up of your masks. So you need to touch up both of your masks, make sure that they're both nice and neat, uh, make sure that we haven't got any problems coming through on the edges and then you'd be good to go. If Photoshop is absolutely terrifying for you, obviously we do have Photoshop for beginners, the online course which was updated not so long ago so that it's all up to date with the current versions of Photoshop. So I'll link to that above as well. Oh, goodness me, back in YouTube world, I just consistently say, we've done a video to that, I'll link it above. And as you can see, that split toning has done a great job of kind of focusing the viewer's eye to look straight at our subject. It is, I think, easier to do with Camera Raw just because it's quicker and you can just get the job done. Anyway, I could go and neaten this up for ages and ages and ages, but that's not going to get the rest of my to-do list done and it's also not going to speed up the delivery of Advent. So hopefully that was helpful for you. You can implement that in any image that you have. Give it a go. Let me know how it went and I'll see you again, hopefully, soon.